the last 100 years have seen the growth of mechanized textile production internationally. In part due to competition handloom has lost much of its market and it is almost non-existent in most countries. However, handloom is still a force to reckon with in India and some other Asian countries. Forty years ago the entire village of Palayati in Tamil Nadu was involved in the textile industry, as years passed by only one such factory exists by the name of Palayati Handloom Weavers Cooperative Society run by a fellow native of the village Mr. Hone. The raw cotton threads are soaked in detergent this will ensure that all the substance that hinders the dyeing process is washed away. Washed cotton's threads are then let to dry. Now the required color powder is mixed with water to make a paste. Now concentrated hydrochloric acid is added to paste. Note how no protective gears are used, this may be due to ignorance or skilled gain through years of experience. Now, nitrate powder is dissolved in water to make nitrate solution which is added to the mixture. Mr. John says nitrate solution should be added slowly and carefully to avoid catastrophic incident as the, the mixture may overflow if poured expeditiously. Mr. Hong say he started working along with his family at the age of 10 since then he has been doing the same job. He says about 40 years back they used to work on large amount of thread that they had to lay it along the roadside for kilometers to let it dry. Alumina is also poured into the mixture. Mr. John does not support his children to take up weaving as their profession as he feels there will be no job security in future. Sodium chloride is added. Salt facilitates the dye to be absorbed into the fabric instead of staying suspended in the water. The washed threads are dipped in caustic soda and drained. Then the threads is dipped in colored mixture. Caustic soda will facilitate cotton thread to obtain the color and retain for long. In case of dark colors, the threads are boiled in water and in case of light colors, the threads are bleached to get the required color perfectly. Mr. John says he runs this cooperative society to produce cloth for the government which then distributes it to the poor public in ration. Threads are let to dry under direct sunlight for two to three days depending on the weather conditions. Similarly differ color threads are made. Threads are distributed among the workers. Threads are wound around a stick. Further the single thread bundles are sent to be mated into a multiple thread bundles. This bundle is now sent to the weavers who work in the throw shuttle pit looms. Mrs. Jaya has been working for the past 8 years to support the family. She claims that she gets about 50 rupees for making one duthit and somehow manages to finish at least two duthies a day. 
the weaver sits at the edge of the pit by hanging her legs down into the pit. By peddling her feet inside the pit, she simultaneously pulls the rope attached to the even heeled D and releases the other attached to the odd heeled to raise the odd threads and depressed even threads. The heels raise or depress each alternate warp strand at the same time by the leg. Final products such as sari, dotas, bedsheet, table linen, bedspreads, towels, etc. are made. John proudly shows the towel he made with the thread that he showed us dyeing, and he points out at huge thread rollers that were left to rust and says that they were in high demands 40 years ago. However, there are still many who advocates for handlooms as reason of tradition, culture, quality, and ideology. Despite these voices in the wilderness, the handloom industry is in dangerous decline, instituting an artistic bankruptcy for future generations.